Nicholas Figures reporting here with Shelby County Commissioner Heidi Schaefer, and um, I received a um, a booklet from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II regarding her Diamond Jubilee. And could you please express your support for Queen Elizabeth II regarding this booklet and her Diamond Jubilee? And could you please um, show to the international community what she extended to me? Mr. Schaefer. Well, I just thought this was very lovely. It's the, the program from her Diamond Jubilee, and you can see it's Elizabeth II, and I believe the R stands for rest. She began her reign in 1952, and it shows that her Diamond Jubilee is in 2012. Mm -hmm. And if you open it up, you see her on her coronation day and some pictures throughout the years. And there she is in her royal regalia. And it's from Buckingham Palace, and it says, I send you my grateful thanks for the words of support which you have so kindly sent on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of my accession to the throne. Elizabeth, 2012. Absolutely. Thank you, Commissioner Heidi Schaefer. You know, you know it was a complete honor to receive this from, um, from Queen Elizabeth II, and it, it was just um, amazing to me. So, um, as a, you know, the youngest Shelby County Unified School Board applicant, I'm just honored, and I will continue to fight and um, help my generation to be inspired in public service. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. And happy 2012 just Diamond Jubilee to Her Majesty. Nicholas Fugues reporting, CNN Our Reporter, here with Shelby County Commissioner Heidi Schaefer regarding um, the Diamond Jubilee of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I received a letter on the behalf of Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, regarding um, me attending an event in Canada and his response to um, me regarding a letter I extended to him regarding um, his forthcoming visit to Canada. So Commissioner Schaefer, could you first wish Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II a happy Diamond Jubilee, and could you please read the letter um, that Prince Charles extended to me? And of course we always wish uh, Her Royal Highness the happiest of all occasions. It's, it's wonderful to have good communications and good relations with, with uh, the, pe the people of Great Britain. And this letter, it says the Office of uh, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. Dear Mr. Pegues, the Prince of Wales has asked me to thank you for your kind letter of the 4th of April. His Royal Highness is most grateful to you for taking the trouble to write as you did. He was particularly touched by your kind words of support, both for himself and his forthcoming to, to Canada, as well as for Her Majesty in her Jubilee year. The Prince of Wales has asked me to send you his warmest thanks and very best wishes. Yours sincerely, Mrs. Claudia Holloway. And that's from Clarence House. From Clarence House in London. And so, Commissioner Schaefer, um, what do you think about Prince of Wales responding to me? Well, I think that's uh, pretty neat. It shows he's got an excellent staff, and I, I just think that's a wonderful, wonderful recognition of you. Absolutely. Nicholas Figures report. And also, he responded to Tennessee Children, you remember, yes. a while back. Nicholas Figures report. I've seen in our report our message the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth. II. Nicholas Pegues reporting here with Shelby County Commissioner Heidi Schaefer with just one week to go for my birthday. You know I'm an international freelance journalist, and so Commissioner Schaefer is going to be reading a letter I received from Clarence House regarding um, me documenting Prince Charles' arrival to Canada. And so, um, you know, one week to go for my birthday to inspire my generation to public service. Commissioner Schaefer, you have the platform. Well, thank you. And this shows, Nicholas, that um, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Yes. Um, this letter is directing you to the correct way to uh, to get the answer that you wanted. And so, but I thought it was very sweet. Dear Nicholas, thank you for your letter requesting to document the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall's forthcoming visit to Canada. In the first instance, you will need to apply for accreditation via the Department of Canadian Heritage. Thank you for your interest in the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. And it's signed, Patty Heatherson. Absolutely, from Clarence House, Nicholas Figues reporting. Thank you, Commissioner. Nicholas Figues here reporting with the Chairman of Shelby County Election Commission, Mr. Myers. And Mr. Myers, I'm going to ask you one question. How can we inspire more youth participation in voting? And what was the voter turnout for young people this election on Super Tuesday? Well, I, I don't know the voter turnout for young people because the votes are just now coming in. And we don't won't be able to break them out demographically until later. Uh, but I think uh, one way that, that uh, people can be inspired, particularly young people, uh, to participate in the process is to, one, understand the process. And so that's going to take 
uh, some work on our part to get information out to young people, but also young people to look for that information and then act on it. Because uh, you're really talking about their future. And if they don't begin to participate early enough, other people will decide their future for them, and they may or may not like that. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Nicholas Figueres for it. Ms. Fletcher, I have a question. Um, I'm a Shelby County Election Commission employee, and um, I wore a Republican badge and when I was working at, as a poll worker. And the reason, you know, I'm a writing candidate that's running against you, but I'm not trying to win. I'm trying to inspire my generation to public service because I noticed that it was a lot of ignorance to the political process regard, at the election commission. Because I had a Republican badge on, I was, you know, called out, harassed. And I don't think it was appropriate to do that because I was representing the institution of government. How can we reform our government and have better educated voters in the 21st century? And that's what the whole point of my campaign is all about. And um, I think you're doing a wonderful job on the Hill, so I, I support you 100%. But how can we inspire a new generation to understanding the political process much better? We, we, we must be more involved we must be more active. Too many of us have been concerned about taking care of our families, taking care of our lives. Uh, I, I see people in this room who have hosted fundraisers for me. Uh, a bill a few minutes ago uh, uh, related, back to that, uh, related back to that fundraiser. It's a terrible burden for people to have to help candidates to try to stay elected. But folks, we've got to get engaged. The doctors here at these tables, you have to communicate with your congressional offices. We are congressmen. People think we have the answers. We don't have the answers. We have to listen to our constituents. Uh, I come home every weekend, and I, I told someone the other day, when you start to see Stephen Fincher coming home once a month instead of once every weekend, it's time for him to come home. It's, he's losing who he is, and, who, and I'm forgetting who I work for. We do not need to do that. I need to remember that you write my check. It's, it's you who I represent, not John Boehner, not Nancy Pelosi, not the president. I work for you, and this is who I'm accountable to. So I think being better contacted, more educated on how the process works, and you're running against me, is that what you said? Well, I'm a writing <laughs> candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. My day was starting out so good. And then, <laughs> I have another opponent. I'll take you, and then we'll... Nicholas is reporting, also known as the governor, here at Union Station. You need an report on this? Really? Nicholas is reporting, seen in our report on this, and this is also known as the governor here in the Law Wolf office building where I ran for United States Congress in the So this is where his office is located, the Longworth, Longworth House office building, and this is where I just received my inauguration tickets to the inauguration of President Barack Obama. So this is really supporting. Seen in our report of message, also known as the governor. So Nicholas Figueres reporting, seen in our report on message. Um, walking here on Capitol ground, by the Longworth Building here in Washington, D.C. on Inauguration Day, or morning, so it's practically 4 o'clock in the morning, walking here by the offices of Congress here on Capitol Hill. We prepare for a second inauguration of President Barack Obama. So Nicholas Figueres reporting, seen in our report on Memphis. Right now I'm walking by the heart office building. We're going to see history once again in the making. Nicholas Figueres reporting, also known as the governor. We count down the second inauguration of President Barack Obama. walk up here to where I will be standing, watching on Capitol grounds as our 
president gets sworn in for a second time, the president of the United States of America is president. The Nicholas Keith reporting. The moment the governor here in Washington, D.C. I will be standing over all the security staff. Nicholas Reeves reporting. We mean our reporter, Mrs. Reeves, also known as the governor. Nicholas Reeves reporting. We mean our reporter, Mrs. Nicholas Reeves, on Inauguration Day 2013. Nicholas Reeves. We mean our reporter, Mrs. As Washington, D.C. begins to prepare for the inauguration of President Barack Obama once again. Nicholas Segeese, seeming our report on Memphis via Nicholas Segeese for Congress. So Nicholas Segeese reporting, seeming our report on Memphis, welcome on the governor, here reporting, Capitol Ground, inauguration, 2013, inauguration day. So Nicholas Segeese reporting, CNN, our report on Memphis here at the inauguration of President Barack Obama, 2013. So Nicholas Segeese, also known as the governor, reporting here at the inauguration. CNN, our report on Memphis. Nicholas Segeese reporting, teaming our reporter on this. 
exiting the United States Capitol after the inauguration day. 2013. So Nicholas G. is reporting, meeting our reporter, and this is going into the Long Wharf House Office Building after the inauguration. Nicholas G. is reporting, also known as the Governor, meeting our reporter, and this also a former candidate for the United States Congress. Congressman Steve Nicholas G. is reporting, meeting our reporter, and this Nicholas Figueres reporting, senior and our reporter in Memphis. Welcome by the Library of Congress. One of my favorite institutions here in Washington, D.C. As you know, I'm a notable writer myself. And this was established by Thomas Jefferson, one of our greatest presidents in the um, 1700s, 1700s, 1800s. So Nicholas Figueres reporting, senior and our reporter in Memphis. Walking here by the Library of Congress, a pretty cool institution here that we need to keep preserving here in the United States of America. So Nicholas Peace walking past the Library of Congress, a very cool institution here in the United States. You see, here are some Greek goddesses. Here on display here at the Library of Congress. Part of Roman and Greek mythology. Here on display at the Library of Congress. Pretty cool stuff. So Nicholas Police reporting, seeing an our report on Memphis promoting the Library of Congress. Because we need more people educated here in the United States of America. I ran a campaign. Um, to have more better educated generation in the 21st century and that's what I want um, done. So Nicholas Pedis reporting as a Shelby County Election Commission employee promoting the Library of Congress and a special thanks to Congressman Stephen Fincher for granting me inauguration tickets. Nicholas Pedis reporting, senior our report Memphis, also known as the governor. Need a better educated generation. So Nicholas Figueres reporting here once again with my Facebook friend and Shelby County Commissioner Heidi Schaefer. How are you doing today, Commissioner Schaefer? Terrific, thank you. Well, I want to um, first thank you for inspiring me when I ran for Congress in 2012. Um, you know, I was running for Congress to inspire my generation to public service, not to win. And I want to thank you for being an inspiration to me. Um, so Nicholas Figueres for Congress 2012. And what is your statement regarding it? And what's, what... Do you think that I impacted the state of Tennessee? Well, I think that any time that a citizen takes part in, in his or her government, it's a good thing. And one of the things that I thought was very sweet was that uh, Congressman Fincher was was very gentlemanlike and kind and um, very appreciative of your efforts. Absolutely. It, because he knew exactly what you were doing and why you were doing it, that it was a, an, an effort to try to um, draw more people into the arena. And that's mm -hmm. always a good thing. Absolutely. And it was to help. Um, yeah, absolutely. And inspire generation of public service. So Nicholas Figueres reporting, also known as the governor here with Commissioner Heidi Schaefer. We're going to get to a lot of good things that I'm doing in the community for just letters from world leaders and a lot of inspirational things. So thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. Nicholas Figueres reporting, seen in our report on Memphis. So Nicholas Figueres reporting, seen in our report on Memphis, also known as the governor here today with Commissioner Heidi Schaefer. And um, this is a philosophy I came up with, and I just want you to listen to this because I think it will help. Um, Capitol Hill when I went up to Washington and, and saw how I impacted the community because so many people in Washington was inspired by me as a young person um, to know that I was involved in public policy etc. So this is my philosophy that states the American people has chosen President Barack Obama to lead our nation once again. Um, my theory is um, the world's wealthiest people, um, something that I'm inspiring to become, have to be subject to a system that we are not comfortable with as leaders. Um, my theory is the American people are like the students in a classroom who have elected President Obama as principal for four years. The students, the American people, still have to follow the teacher, the wealthy, in order to govern a classroom. It says, why can't this theory be something the American people follow? In fact, the American people 
need the teachers, which is the upper 1%, for jobs, etc., do you think the classroom model for America can at least restore order to our country? Um, regarding something in this philosophy, I know it's kind of complex, but I, I need to expand on it. But what do you think about that? Well, I think that's a very good um I think that that's a very good way to take a look at it. The other side of it is going to be, of course, Nicholas, that we always want dissenting views because mm. anytime somebody has power that's unchecked, absolutely, then they're going. It, human nature is that they're going to maybe not purposefully, but begin to push it and push it and push it. One of the reasons that our country has been successful is that we have checks and balances built into everything. So. Um, if you want to use the classroom model mm -hmm. with uh, the principal being the person who's in charge and the rest need to follow along, I would say that there would also need to be a school board in there oh, and oh, yeah. vice principals and parents of those students okay. constantly acting as a check and balance. Absolutely. That's the beauty of our system. We never want for one person or one branch of government to become so strong that the rest of us can't pull back the reins. Absolutely. So you're understanding my philosophy. Yes, I think so. Well, thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. Nicholas for reporting, also known as the governor. So Nicholas Figuese reporting, seen in our report on Memphis, Nicholas Figuese, also known as the governor, here with Commissioner Heidi Schaefer. And um, I've been dying to ask this question, Commissioner Schaefer, is what did you think about former President George W. Bush and family visiting East Memphis in July of 2012? And did you or do you know anyone who attended that event here in East Memphis? So Nicholas Figuese reporting. Yes, I did know some people who attended it, and they said it was amazing. I did not get to, but um, I always think it's good when our former presidents stay active and um, continue to represent and uh, represent the community, represent the country, and show that we can come together. George W. Bush is, um, I thought, was a very godly man and a man who mm. tried to um, handle his duties in office with dignity. His wife, Laura, did a wonderful job. She had a real commitment to kids and schools and reading, which I share. And I thought the fact that they visited Memphis was a particular honor for our city. Absolutely. And you know, I have a website up now comparing me to George W. Bush. It's called Nicholas I. W. Pugis. I mean, it's just something <laughs> that just kind of like took a life of its own. It has 400, and um, I think 450 friends now. And so it's kind of an inspiring thing for me because I try to inspire the city. And I have all these websites up, like Nicholas the Governor, Nicholas that. So maybe I'll be a big time politician for the world one day. Well, so. I like to, instead of politician, I prefer public servant. Public servant and public statesman. Servant. Absolutely. Yes, statesman. Absolutely. Thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. And, you know, former President George W. Bush always extended me a 26th birthday greeting. And that was very inspiring to me also because he's a very special president to me really is. So thank you. Nicholas Pegues reporting, seen in our report of Memphis. Nicholas Pegues reporting, seen in our report of Memphis. And this is my last question to Commissioner Schaefer is, what is your message to my Facebook friends via Nicholas the Governor Pegues? Now, <laughs> you created that, we both created that Commissioner Schaefer becoming kind of popular in the community. It started at the Election Commission. Now, since I made a Facebook and um, you said it was kind of a support thing when you said the governor. I love that, that video when you said the governor is supporting me because I like Governor Haslam so much. But now it's becoming quite popular and a lot of people are on there. Um, what is your message to my Facebook friends? Also, what would you fa say to my favorite supporters? I have a lot of favorite supporters such as Hannah Belts, Sim Humphreys, um, Terry Rowland, Molly Mendicow, James Humphreys, um, Jess um I mean, James Harold and Mark Goins and even Congressman Marsha Blackburn. And these people actually reside in the state of Tennessee. Now, I like all of my Facebook friends because they really inspire me. But these people are the ones who really stood out to me. And, um, and of course, Kelly Jacobs, who works um, down in Mississippi in local politics. And um, basically, my my question is, what do you think about Nicholas the Governor Pegues Facebook? And could you please thank these residents for supporting me and us and our initiatives on Inspire My Generation? Well, Nicholas, one of the things that I love about you and one of the things that I think is unique about America is that we truly believe that if something is humanly possible to, to do, mm -hmm. then we have the basic requirement. And um, what we do is we look and see something that we might want to get done. And instead of looking at the obstacles, we look at the way to get it done. And Nicholas, you, I know you have certain goals in mind for your life. <laughs> and, um, and you just go out there and you get them. And I think that is an inspiration to the whole community. Awesome. That, um, 
that there are there aren't obstacles except the ones that we put in our own way. There are challenges, but those are things that can be gotten through, gotten around, and we can become stronger after them. And Nicholas, that's why I support what you're doing because I think that you, by going out and getting going after what you want in such a positive way, can inspire other people not to fall into a gloominess or hopelessness, Absolutely. but to look for the possibility in every situation. Absolutely. I thank you for that, Commissioner Schaefer. In fact, I had a wonderful Valentine's Day yesterday. I got so many letters from some of these individuals, so many international people, and they was like saying, Happy Valentine's Day. And I was like, that is so inspiring to me that I've impacted the community and, and really changing the, the culture of, of Memphis. So that's very inspiring to me as a public servant. So Nicholas Forgets reporting, seen in our report of Memphis, also known as the governor. Thank you, Commissioner Schaefer, and you have a blessed day. You too. Thank you. Let's go. Nicholas McGee's reporting CNN Student News here with um, the equestrians who's going to be working with the White House today. Is that correct? Yes. So what, do you, what is your statement? Uh, go America. Yeah, USA. I've, USA. Nicholas McGee's reporting CNN Student News. Thank you guys for your service. Yeah, no problem. Seen in our reporting memphis. Procession of the presidential inaugural parade. Nicholas Keyes reporting, seeing our reporter mission. Schaefer, you know, 
you know, it was a complete honor to receive this commission um, from Queen Elizabeth II, and it, it was just um, amazing to me. So, um, as a, you know, the youngest Shelby County Unified School Board applicant, I'm just honored, and I will continue to fight and um, help my generation to be inspired in public service. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. And happy 2012 Diamond Jubilee to Her Majesty.